I don't know if I'm at the point yet where I'm ready to make changes on the offensive line or, or yeah. let me rephrase this. I don't know what the changes need to be on the offensive line because I think that's a little bit of a different animal and any kind of little change can have a big impact positively or negatively. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust Harry Heastan a little bit to make those changes. But what I do know that I would do if I was in Coach Heastan's shoes, I am sitting down and I'm letting every guy know there is not a guy on my roster right now that has locked in a spot the way we've played the first two weeks. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to put pressure on y'all, but you're not living up to the standard. So I'm going to work to get y'all where you need to be. You guys need to take it and 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 do better. Take what we're practicing and apply it to the field. If you're someone not in a starting lineup and you're not happy about it, give me a reason to play you in practice this week. Because I like right now, like I love Josh Lug. He's a great, great kid. But a sixth year senior his size should should be playing better. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. should. Uh, you know, I I I I love Zeke Carell in, in the spring was excellent. Zeke Carell in the blue gold game was excellent. Zeke Carell is a starter in 2020 in two mop-up moments. Had some good, really good moments, especially against North Carolina. Zeke Carell, the first two games, just not been good enough. Now, am I ready to just dismiss all the work and say, oh, no? Or, you know, because here's the thing, too, is not it's easy for fans, for us to sit here as analysts and for fans to sit there at home and say, ah, screw him, throw that guy. But here's the thing, once you bench a guy, you, you might lose him. Right. Yep. Or or you bench a guy too soon before the lights about to go on. And so you got to be really smart about, OK, this kid is doing this in practice and it's really good. Mm -hmm. I got to figure out how to get him over here to do it on Saturday. Right. And I think that's the issue that Notre Dame is having with Zeke Carell is because everything I've heard going all the way back to last spring into this spring into the fall is this kid is really good at center. I'm hearing it from defensive players. I'm hearing it from offensive people. But then he gets to Saturdays and the feet stop and you wonder if the speed is too much for him. I don't know what it is, but there comes a point in time when, it, and we talked about this with quarterback over the years, where there comes a point in time where you got to say, hey, look, yes, Ian Book is a great practice player, but yeah. this other kid over here, number 15, is more of a game day player. We got to make the move. Well, mm -hmm. it's the same thing here at the offensive line. I don't know what the move is. I don't know when the move is, but the reality is they have reached their point of, okay, this isn't acceptable anymore. Either play better or I'm going to find somebody else who – like I'll put a young guy in there to make the mistakes that Josh Lugg is making and that Zeke Krell is making. I will yeah. rather put – like I can live with Blake Fisher not playing well the first two games because I can say start number four. He's a sophomore. Right. Now he right. needs to get better, Right. But when a six-year senior is making those mistakes, or a fifth-year captain is is jumping off sides on a game on a drive that could potentially put the game away on a third and three, he's false starting. Uh, it's not okay for me. When a senior like Zeke, I know I know Zeke hasn't played a lot of snaps, but he's still a flipping senior. So my point is, am I ready to give up on Zeke Carell? No, I'm not. I think he's a good player. I think he's not playing well. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah. that's my issue with Josh Lug. He's a good. I think he's a good player. He's shown it, but he's not playing well. But at some point in time, you have to say, okay, I think you can be a good player, but you're not playing well. I have to give somebody else a shot. I don't know if that's right now, Ryan. I'm not saying yeah. it is. I think you need to be real hesitant about moving Jarrett Patterson back to center because that there is no coming back from that, right? Mm -hmm. Like once that happens, it happens. And then two weeks later, the light goes on for Zeke Carell. You don't throw him in there and then move the other guy back out to guard again, right? right? Like – I think you need to rethink things now that Drew Pine's taken over because you are going to have a different quarterback. But if you're going to decide to go with Zeke Carell, then you need to roll with Zeke Carell. And if he doesn't play well, then you need to find somebody else for center and leave Jarrett Patterson alone. Or you make the move now and you roll with it. And so I don't know what the moves are, got in my, you know, Ryan and, and people in the chat, but I just know that what we're seeing right now isn't good enough. It's not, it's not good enough from a coaching standpoint because this is what I've said. I know for a fact that Harry Heastan does not teach things the way that we saw them on, on practices. You've seen it with your own eyes, Ryan. But at some point yep. in time, you're either teaching it or you're allowing it, and both of them result in the same thing. And so there has to be accountability from a coaching standpoint. There has to be accountability from a player standpoint. And we're getting to that time where these things need to get fixed and get corrected, Ryan. This this is something that me, you, and Sean all have all agreed upon. Yesterday, if you joined us for the show, everyone out there listening, you you heard us speak adamantly about every day 
is an evaluation opportunity for the offensive line moving forward. It is. Everyone should be being evaluated on a day-to-day basis now. Every single player. Because we know it hasn't been good enough through two games. It hasn't. And it is such an important and vital position, not only just from a structure of winning football games, but also just working together. One bad offensive lineman can fracture but potentially four other good ones around him. Like that's right. how ba- that's how important cohesion is up front, right? Ryan, and you said this to me after the game on Saturday. You yeah. said it, it's. It, I think it, you and then Vince also said this to me. It's in every single play. It's one guy. Yep. It's like one guy, it, but it's a different one guy every time. Yes. And t- that my, I'm bringing that up. I'm interrupting you. To bring that up because that right mm-hmm. there makes your point that it it just if it's just one guy on every single play. Your line's going to stink. Yep, and that's the reality of it. And this isn't this isn't just the Zeke Carell is the whipping boy or Josh Lug is the whipping boy. Everyone needs to play better. Right. Every single Blake player. Fisher, I'm not saying Joel all Jarrett Patterson, yeah. all of them. I'm not I'm not say, sitting here and saying that just the center and right guard position are the only two spots that need to be evaluated. No, I'm saying all five need to be evaluated on a daily basis. They do right because Harry Heeson has done this before. Brian, right? <laughs> He has shown that he's not afraid to make a change during the season if it is proves who is the best five on the field or to jumpstart stuff, right? Like right. he has shown that he has he is okay with doing that. Notre Dame again, I'm not sure you're there yet because in order to replace someone, there needs to be someone that earned that spot, right? right? Like you're not just going to replace him just to replace him. There has to be somebody right. that is playing well enough where you say like, yeah, I, I can make that change now. So. Every day is an evaluation period for everyone, but I think especially for the offensive line, it is vital for Notre Dame to to figure out who the best five is moving forward. That is paramount because it could it could also it could be a long term decision too. Yeah. Like it doesn't just have to be a this game decision; it just has to be this season decision. Like, I mean, honestly, Brian, like we've talked about freshmen, you usually don't want to like push along too far as far as like you know playing early from an offensive line perspective, right? But if Billy Strauss ready to play, Billy Strauss ready sure. to play, right? If he's your be- sure. one of your best five, get him on the field, and then that's a long term decision right. and a short term decision. And that's just so, an example. That's just yeah. an example, not necessarily because yep. we we haven't seen Billy Strauss practice. Sure. I, I, we if, have no if Ty Chan's we're, ready, right. whoever we're just a doesn't point. matter. Pick a guy, Andrew Kostoff. Yes. Like it could be yes. Pat Coog, Michael I don't Carmody. Care who sure. Right. It just you got to find guys that want to be out there. The biggest thing is, you know, the thing that bothers me the me the most is just we haven't seen the toughness. Like it's not that they're not playing hard, they're not playing physical. And and I don't know if that's a mental thing or if it's I don't know what it is, but they've got to figure out a way to co- get it fixed. And that's not just a player problem. That's a coaching problem as well. And it starts at the top and it works down to the position coaches, right? It's about coach Reese putting in stuff that he the guys know. It's about the offensive line coach making sure the guys are executing and being held to a certain standard. 